Hello, hello, good morning, happy Tuesday. Oh, where's the max horse? Okay, I have to fix that. Oh, fun things. Okay, so I've got the log showing up, so I can actually see what's going on. Yeah, device connected to the system is not functioning, which would be the capture card. Yay! That's what that's what has been going on all the time. Uh, okay, so if I restart that, then it works. Uh, hello, Diablo. Hello, Sazab. You know, it does make me wonder if there are, like, if they're messed up or something. So I switched, I was using the USB powered hub. And I switched last night after the stream to not USB powered up. By the way, this is not the microphone I'm using. I'm using a microphone you can't see behind this microphone uh, because this is the, the 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 Audio Technica with the red scarlet, and that is um, I've actually made it worse. <laughs> so I plugged everything into the computer. I played around with a bunch of stuff. The uh, let's see what it is. Um, I was getting errors. Oh, by the way, also I need to deactivate and reactivate, and there we go. Okay, so that's up and good. Limonox, hello, how are you doing today? All right, so I can turn on the Red Scarlet by going over to Red Scarlet and switching the audio input to literally anything else. So for example, I'll do the, uh, the webcam. And I wait for a couple seconds, and then I switch back to the Red Scarlet, and now I can start using that. And so this works for about a minute or so, and then it fails. But hey, it looks good. It sounds good, right? <laughs> it sounds good for a very brief period of time until it stops working. Also, what happened to cat cam? You're too below things. Okay, now cat cam isn't showing. Hold on, okay, why, why is that? Properties, oh, USB camera, because it's not plugged in. That would explain the cat cam not working. Okay, hold on, let me fix that. So they make PCIe cards that have their own controller. They're useful in cases that you need to debug really dumb shit. I've used them to fix machines where ESD fried the Southbridge's USB ports entirely, but the machine otherwise worked fine. You know, I wonder if there is something like that or... So the USB clearly is working because it's able to get data, send power through it, do stuff like that, right? But I wonder if it's not a problem with the USB per se, but there's something in it where it's like causing it to brown out or overload or like a buffer or a cache or something like that, that that is not working correctly. That could, that could make a lot of sense. I'm going to go plug this cat cam into the back and let's see if that causes more issues, less issues. Also, I'm going to be interested to see like the red scarlet is now running a lot longer than it was before. Something else that I had checked and maybe I, I did it backwards. Yeah. So general, I, I switched the process. On, in advanced in OBS, the process priority was normal, and I switched it to high, hoping that that would work. You know, keep keep it running. And like maybe if there's like a CPU problem or or something like that. So maybe maybe there is an issue somewhere with the computer, or it's like breaking down or whatever. I have had it for four years, so it could be like a. 
desktop should last longer than that, but I also did buy a pre-made. So those are, those are less quality. Maybe it's time for me to just build my own computer too, which I don't want to do, but if I need to. All right, let me go plug in cat cam because Zilby is here. Wait. Okay, no, he's, he's no longer here. He left. So never mind. Don't need to plug that in yet. So the reason you hate powered hubs is because a lot of them are power injector style. So 5V rail is connected to the upstream's port's 5V power pins. They're never safe no matter what people say, but extremely hard to find a properly isolated one. Okay, that makes sense. The problem... Oh, Limanox, you're sick. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I hope you're feeling better soon. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of shocked because in my test before this, the Red Scarlet was not working for, like, what was lasting for about a minute before we started streaming. So I don't know what's going on now. Now it's working for a lot longer, which is good and sad. A powered hub should not ever touch the upstream's port's power, but they do, and power from the hub flows into the computer. Oh, so maybe, maybe I fried the computers, the desktops, USB ports. That could have been it. And the... Fried, but no, like, um... Like fr fried is usually like fully, fully destroyed, right? It would be more of something that temporarily hurt it. They end up hitting their ESD protection a lot earlier. Ooh, yeah, that sounds about right. It's wearing the components out and they're designed to fail closed instead of open, which I have noticed because if uh, if you've ever lived in an area which has extreme oh you know what i get this all the time here too and this could also be wearing out the 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 usb ports or i guess the systems that the usb ports are are installed into to be like a little bit more specific there it's really dry here especially over the winter and every year there's static shocks like i i try to like touch something else i then go and like touch the stream deck i go and touch like literally anything and static shock pretty bad static shock and that could absolutely be going back up into the usb port You boil water during the winter to keep at least 20% humidity so you don't ESD shit by existing. Wait, wait, so Maine is near the ocean, right? Shouldn't that be more humid? I always assumed that, like, the closer to the ocean you are, the more humid it is. Oh, interesting. Okay, I had no idea. Oh, humidity is relative to temperature. Really? I thought humidity was um, isolated from that. You can get negative 20F during night in a winter. It rips all the humidity out of your house. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's colder than we get. The place you live has perfect weather year-round, but being sick sucks. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. It absolutely does. Plus, I missed what you said before, which is you're having tea, first time in a long time, where you're not coding or working. I don't like being free and not being able to do anything. I, I remember somebody once, one of my friends had uh, uh, told me that they went to a, um, a career coach. And they were, like, describing all these things that they were doing and... Uh, when they had mentioned something like that, the career coach told them, I think you need to learn how to just sit 
in silence with yourself, like how to be bored, <laughs> which is, which is hard, hard for us. Okay. So you've done that for three days now. Oh, it's one of those sicknesses that are lasting a really long time. I'm sorry about that. Bubby, you want to hang out? Hi. Bubby, we have food here. Hold on, let me go see how Zilby is. Okay, I think you want some food. Okay, so if you have a PCI X1 port, you can throw a suggestion out. Worst case is you end up with a part to go into spare parts box for future debugging. Look, I have thrown so many spare parts out over the years because once a sysadmin, always a sysadmin, right? That being said, I should open up that case and take a look at uh take a look and see what i've got in there because like it's um i there's pcie and then wasn't there like oh no no i was thinking of pci and then pcie is the new one new one i'm dating myself with that because i remember when pcie came out and all of my stuff had PCI, and I kept on buying PCIe. And I couldn't plug it in. <laughs> and that got really, that was really upsetting. Oh, then, then you had both, right? You had like, here's the two PCIe's with five or six PCI's. I'm like, now all I want to do is get the PCIe's, and now I don't have the ports for it. Come on. Come on. Liminox, you used to sysadmin for your small hosting company. Nice. I think that sysadmining is a is a great introduction and experience for a lot of things. You remember when ISA was eight whole bits? I don't think I was sysadmining during that time. Computers are a wallet killer. They can be. They can be, especially if you like to tinker. Because then, then like you want to buy all the cool things to put in the computer as opposed to just buy a computer. And I used to like build my own computers and do all that kind of stuff. But then I, when I stopped being a sysadmin, along with that came like a, oh, I'm, I overdid it. <laughs> and now I just want to not do that at all. That mic survived for how long? Because I turned it on at the beginning of the stream. So five minutes and like 14 minutes or so, 12 minutes. Let me see, I have the logs up. Okay, so it got a at eight oh no, this is at eight oh five. Oh, so there's no locks for the red scarlet going down. It okay, so OBS doesn't see any logs about it right now, this one. Which is a bit unfortunate. And then what I can do the same thing is I can
So another thing that I heard about is that it might be the timestamps from the USB system, or it could be, as you mentioned, the USB port itself snapped off. Just for a second, just for a millisecond. But that could be enough for OBS to lose it, right? And then it doesn't automatically turn it back on because I don't think there's any sources for that. And if I, let's say, go back to And now the Scarlet is back on. I didn't have to do anything except change the sources for it. So that does feel like a US, like all of the ports are dead because I tried a pretty significant number of ports on the system. So it might be a motherboard failure or something. A very cheap physical small card takes a SATA power plug, so it doesn't use motherboard power. Ooh. Interesting. That's nice. Okay, I will, let me save you, and we will um, buy, let's see, buy um, PCI USB, Because if that would work, then I could just switch everything over to it. Or I can buy mul multiple of them, too. All right. Thank you for that. You stopped using desktop PCs when and started using laptop when you started your CS career. It's very convenient for you. Yeah, I actually had been using a laptop for everything, including I was streaming from the laptop too. But then uh, when I, I was trying to do a Ludum Dare stream in 2019 or 2020, and the stream just kept on disconnecting because the laptop, even though I had like, it was a pretty beefy computer, just kept on going to like five frames per second every time I try to compile and it wasn't rust. And you know, this is back in early 2020. So that was not great. And they're like, okay, I'm just going to buy a desktop. Like the first one I can get the fastest one I can get out here just so that I can uh, stream on a second separate device. And that's been working for four years pretty well until now. So, and it's interesting. The, the Yeti mic is fine. It's just this focus, right? Which I wonder if it's taking too much power. Oh, no, didn't die. Yeah, so I will, I'll play around with that. And we'll, we'll see how it is. Uh, is that mic using phantom power? I, how do I know? I don't know how to answer that myself. Ooh, 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 wait, did it just die? I just got an error. I just got an alert message. Okay. In OBS, it's still using the red scarlet as a red scarlet. I just got device microphone. Invalidated retrying and then it worked interesting okay the mic sounds really good which is why i want to use it <laughs> that's why i want to use it i think his mic is it's a normal xr mic and he needs the microphone amp on his scarlet solo to use it yeah i think i think that's what it is but 
I am relying upon all of you to tell me what it is because I don't know enough about it. I think I saw something about Phantom Power, but I don't know if it was this mic or if it was something else completely. Like, I'm, I'm more of a... I, I know more about programming and leadership and management and things like that than I do mics. Use USB mic, but it picks up sounds from like 200 miles away. They're designed for that, so that way you can walk away from your computer and everything just works the way you expect it to. Oh, and somebody in Discord just asked about the U course. Uh, let's see, I'm coming here from the U course and I have a question about the intended scope of U. I have the backend for a chess app in Rust. Do you all think the U is the right choice for turning it into an interactive browser game? Or something like chess app? Like there's a lot of it depends there. Okay, I invited him to, or invited them to join on a uh, uh, stream somewhere. Okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? I. Uh, I forgot to click the go live button in YouTube. I've been not doing that. But we haven't done anything, so that's fine. Get that card, drop it in, see if your USB problems magically vanish. And if it does, then I've just extended the life of the computer for a little bit of time, which is great. Because, like, I have some things that, like, might be, like, life changes. Uh, and... um then that would that would be really helpful. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. And that's what we'll have to play with. All right, um, YouTube, I am so sorry about that. I accidentally didn't click the go live button on YouTube. So we um that was just sitting there streaming to Twitch only for a while. But we haven't really done anything. We've just had the mic fail once today so far. Uh, and uh, uh, we sort of like debugged a little bit. Uh, today is going to be sort of like a light programming stream because we are... I did all the stuff previously for the LMS. We got that sort of set up and, and going out. And I want to sort of like continue working on some of the other things the mic situation is still questionable, not great, but we have some ideas for it. You run an open source org, call, org called Chess Lab Lab on GitHub, and we do like open source chess SDKs and servers. Oh, oh, is that for, that's for the, uh, the person who, I don't know if they're here yet. They didn't respond. They were in the course help channel on Discord. Lamnox, I can't remember. Are you on the Discord? Um, okay, so... Oh, Llama, you want to install something? That's fine.
And then let's see, what do I want to do? I want to open up you. All right, so we just have a bunch of these things we can work on. And uh, this seems to be as good for anything else. I don't actually need this ready current stage right now because that's kind of was used previously. All right, uh, heads up, ads in 30 seconds. That's what Twitch tells me. So, promise me never plug a hub into that card. You do not want to find out the hub kills things by killing your new card. Yeah, that that's true. I will do my best to remember that. And if I have like an extra card in there and it's it's powered and all that stuff, I will. I don't think I'll even need a hub. I'll do the, I'll just not use the hub at all. In fact, because I don't have the hub right now, you know what I'll do is just literally move the hub away from the computer. I can do that right now. Um, let's see. Emma, hello. How are you doing today? Oh, and you're uh okay, I see. You're 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 you asked the the question on Discord. So yeah, we can uh we can do our best to answer here. If the if I suddenly stop talking in the middle of it, it's because the microphone is having fun today due to potentially bad USB ports. Maybe, possibly, perhaps. It's hard to tell. Uh okay, anyway, so you had asked. You're, uh, you're coming from the U course. So for everybody else, the U course is a free uh, introduction to U.RS that we had on uh, Twitch. Oh, sorry, Twitch? No, YouTube. Uh, and I have a question about the intended scope of U. I have the backend for a chess app in Rust. Do you all think U is the right choice for turning it into an interactive browser game? Like, is that a normal use case or would it be considered hacky? I've never built a front end like ever in anything. Uh, so, oh, uh, ad break ends in 30 seconds. Let me, let me wait until that is over just in case. I don't think you're being hit by that because you came in during the ad break, but that's a just in case one. Libby, you want to come here? Come here. Okay, and we should be back with the Red Scarlet. Nice. Oh, and Cato is here too, which is nice. You wanna hang out with me? Okay, he wants to hang out with us. Um, okay. It, okay, so Limanox says it wouldn't be considered hacky. It already died again. Okay, we'll just use this mic. Uh, so a question would be, like, so some follow-up questions, Emma. How do you connect to your back end? Is it a through, like, a live connection? Like, uh, I can just do this. 
is it going to be a live connection or is it going to be a uh like a live connection like a web socket or is it going to be like a um, a normal like post request where you're just gonna like send one request out and then you just sort of wait for a request back with that Actually, I might be using the term backend wrong. What I have now is just interacts with the terminal. Oh, so you have like, you have a chess game that's sort of like a CLI chess game. Yeah, so if you if you have something like that, you have a lot more work uh, ahead of you. So the front end is gonna run on people's browsers. And while you're developing locally for yourself, your browser and your server on the same device. But in reality, you could have browsers like across the world. Like for example, your browser, watch, I'm assuming you're on a browser because I think most people are on browsers watching Twitch. So you're on a browser maybe, and that is connecting to servers that are, I believe over here in the US, but they might be local to where you are, but they're not in the same building, they're not in the same city, they're not potentially in the same country that you are. And that's what's gonna be like with your system too, is you have to make a, you have to make a server that can handle an unknown number of browsers connecting to it and then creating stuff. You guys aren't watching via carrier pigeons? I mean, it would be, it would be higher bandwidth if I use carrier pigeons, right? Like I can I can record at like 8K and send that out to you. We'll just have high latency, but that'll be fine, right? Also, hello stacking. How are you doing today? Okay, so are you scared of this? Okay. So with web development, we have a couple different things that we want to consider when we're creating a game or like anything interactive where things are changing, especially when it's multiplayer and there's like two people doing stuff. When you have a, you want to create probably like an actual API server, something that can accept uh, HTTP requests and responses. Like for example, a uh, the Axum course that I have would allow you to create like a chess server where you're going to connect that to a database and you're going to receive a like a request like I want to move this piece over here. It has to do a bunch of logic to make sure that that's even a valid move. And then it like sets the state of what the, the board is in the database. And it also sends that to the two front ends to say this is what's happened. And that's that's going to be I would not consider this a a beginner app, especially for a front end. What I'm trying to do right now is set it up so that I controlling both players at the moment can interact by clicking the stuff on your browser rather than typing commands into a terminal. Do you have the ability to set up an HTTP server in your terminal application because like think think of it this way like don't don't think of it as you can control this via a browser think of this as you can control it 
by using are you familiar with with tools like uh postman or curl Not really? Okay. So the problem is that you have an application here. Let's, uh, let's draw this out. We have your, we have your chess application, right? So here's your, here's your chess app and that's sitting here. And then that's sitting inside of probably how do I make this bring the front this entire thing here is your computer and so you have your chess application and you want another application so like for example a browser These are separate processes, right? So they there's no way for them to interact with each other at all. And there's this theory in, uh, what was it, the seven factor app? That if you want to be able to have the chess, if you want to be able to have the browser control the chess app, the best way to do that is through some kind of network request so instead of like there would actually be like code that you run that just affects it you send an http request so we can do that with something like http like a post for example to slash like move and then you're going to send like a json body of like you know um which p like the piece id and like the destination like the um, destination that it's going to like that's that's where you can send it. So this would be sent over, and then the chess client could then send back whether or not it was successful or not. That's that's what it is, right? Here's here's the problem, Emma. Even if it's offline, uh, like there there it is an online mentality for this thing, right? Because it is the equivalent of a web server and a web client. Even if you don't use a browser, and we instead use curl to control this, it's literally the same technologies behind the scenes that are doing this. Can it be done? Yes, absolutely. The The problem is that there's a few things that you probably need to learn before you start doing that, right? So uh, this needs to have an HTTP server inside of it to be able to control it because you need to be able to send a message to it. And depending upon where you are in your programming journey, uh, that might be easy, that might be really hard. So I guess like, how would you self like where would you self identify skill wise in not just rust we don't you know that doesn't really matter here just as a developer That's true. You could you could skip the back end altogether and make a make a board that just sort of like works in the front end only. 
Okay, you know how to code, but you're new to actually developing anything. So here's what I would suggest. Treat this like a, a final project. Like uh, if you were gonna like be in a, if I was like teaching a, a school, like a class or something, there's like the capstone, there's the finals, whatever you wanna call it. This would be like the final project because there's a bunch of different technologies that you need to learn to put it all together to make it, to make it work. Like you need to learn like, okay, great. You have this part of EF chess, but you don't have the ability to accept HP responses. But I wouldn't necessarily have you add in an HTTP server until you understood how HTTP servers worked and then add that in because the integration of the two, if you're trying to learn both of that at the same time, you might run into the problem where, where's the problem, where is the problem really? Is it in the integration or is it in the not understanding how HTTP really works? So if you learn how to make a server first and you learn how to make a browser app second, and then you learn how to integrate the two together, third, then I think you're ready to build that. that that's my guess. So I, I would say like it probably is in that like several months thing that Limanox is mentioning, but less because it's, that's how long it takes to build and more because that's, a, that's the learning that you need to come back to this later and go with it. And you can absolutely, as Limanox is mentioning, is build just the, just like the chess part in one thing. Like, okay, you have built a chess application inside of the CLI. Great. Like, that's actually really impressive. That's awesome. It just, if you're going to learn you, build the same thing as Limanox, as Limanox said multiple times in you only no nothing else no server no multiplayer no um just like just the board and like move it around there and everything will be fine use that to learn you and then you can keep on like upping it by adding more features and eventually go to full stack once you know enough about it and it can be your that can be your um I wanted to say something like it can be your white whale, but the white whale killed Ahab. So that 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 doesn't work. It could be your capstone. But does that work? Does that help Emma? Basically, the end result is, yes, it's viable to do. I don't know if I would recommend it for you at your stage right now. I know the the puns with you are are great. Like it, it almost brings us to a uh, who's on first level. Look, maybe it killed him, but was Ahab not set free in the end? That's sort of like one of those bad guy movie things where it's like I promise to free your you know family member as soon as you do this thing, and then you, they do the thing, and you're like I free them to the afterlife, and then then destroy like just kill them. Like that doesn't seem right. Can't call it the white rabbit because you never chase that. It'll end up really bad. Yeah, that's true. Oh, Limax, you've done over a hundred plus chess apps. I chess apps is one of the one of the things where I feel like most developers want to build a chess app at some point in time. And the big thing is to either you fall prey to it or you avoid it for just as long as possible. But the desire is always there. Okay, Emma, did that help? Did that answer your question? Also, in the meantime, Helga Bed, hello. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for the raid. Doing good. Uh, how's your stream today? And what were you working on? Um, he has come for cat. Cat left. Like the cat was here and then he left. So sorry about that. Uh, so let's see. JD Newman, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, Emma, I'm 
yes, I think we are re recommending rewrite it with you without like relying upon anything else, just like in, in you, just to learn you. And because the chess part is a familiar part to you, therefore that should be, like it gives you something to build inside of you, which is perfect. Stream was long, still the Tui. Okay, that's nice. Uh, Londo, thank you so much for the subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And 24 months, that's almost two years. Yeah, that, that feels like almost two years. Are, are, do we have an off by one air? The TUI journey never ends. Yeah, that's that's true. I think most of our journeys just never end, right? You hope someday Toggle learns to read the error messages. I mean, don't we all strive to someday learn the air, learn to read the error messages? Maybe someday we, somebody, some of us will will figure out how to do that. Uh, let's see, Scott, hello. You're down to smashing bugs. Hey, smashing bugs is a good thing, right? Okay, Toggle, have a great rest of your day. Have a good meal. And thank you again for the raid. Uh, okay, so uh, everybody, we are working on... Uh, our LMS. So LMS is a little bit... It's a little bit different than than Togglebit's um, uh, TUI tool. This is a learning management system that we built in in Rust and you uh, in uh, live on stream a couple of years ago, and uh, recently released a brand new course for Docker on it. And uh, we did a lot of updating for it, but now it's like okay, we you know we want we want to um, want to actually like continue improving it and making it better. And so I have a bunch of backlog tasks for this. And so our Tuesdays now are going to be working on this. And so I have this, this small card, you know, just a, just a tiny one. Remake end-to-end -end testing, because I previously did this by using edge testing with, no, no, not edge testing, boundary testing with uh, uh, the automated testing system. And I don't, I'm not really happy with that. I want to actually just do like real ones. I have I have a database with our API inside of a Docker container, and that's up and running. And so I should be able to just do an actual real test, uh, figure out how to resync and set up the database, and then go from there. And so I kind of want to just reset all that. Is the Docker course live? Yes, it is live. So if any of you are interested, uh, this is the Docker course. So let me just go to the course here. And also YouTube, I'll send it to your chat too. There, there that is. But yeah, that should be live. And um, if you are, uh, I usually get, I, I get a notification, except I got logged out on my phone because I guess time or, or something else. So I don't actually get information from it of like, hey, somebody bought the course. I'll see that afterwards on the emails. So if there's any, if there's any problems, let me know. I'm also keeping an eye on Discord for anybody who like runs into any problems. Okay, so um, this is this is the deployed version. I have the local version here. Uh, this is connected to production right now and I can change that uh, 
Okay, so I copied over the env files, and then at the same time, in the LMS, I want to restart trunk, and then over here in the code, I need to go to like any of these files and just resave it. And apparently that combined together will now recompile with the correct environment variables, I, I think. Yeah, it does. And so now I have like, this is the local database that I have set up for this. Oh yeah, Limonox, I'm sorry about that. Wait, wait, do you, do you memorize your, your card number? I can't even come close to memorizing my card number. I don't even know if I want to because that would be too dangerous for me to buy anything. Okay, so uh, testing. Now, my plan for testing is to use Playwright for this, which I, I used that before. And it's great, but there's some sort of like changes to it and like updates. And I kind of just want to rebuild the thing. Playwright doesn't have the ability to use Rust, which is unfortunate. So we're going to have to use TypeScript for this because, you know, it's a web technology. Knowing the, knowing the number is just easier than having to get the card out. I, I guess... I still, I well, I guess it's just me. I have trouble f memorizing things, so I generally don't even try. <laughs> I've I've gotten that far in life that I've just learned why bother try. Yeah, I know. TypeScript mentioned. You know, twenty three hundred digits of pi. Oh my. I mean, I would, the fact that there's no pattern to it is even, yeah, that's, that's really impressive. You know, all the digits of pi, that, that's more impressive? Or maybe it becomes, but there's probably like a less impressive, like eventually we get like, oh, you're more impressive and then like too many digits and it becomes less impressive. Because it is a circle, right? So like we have to come back around to the beginning of not impressive at all. Something like that. Okay, so it's easy. All the digits are zero, one, two, three. Uh, oh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Oh, sorry, Zilby. I, I scared Zilby. Okay, let me plug in Zilby Cam. Because I know you all care a lot more about watching Zilby than me. And now you can do that. Okay, so I guess there's a couple a couple things that would be really interesting is I wonder, I guess like authentication is the hardest part for this because I'm a, uh, I use Auth0 for this and as far as I know, there's no local Auth0 that I can do to sort of like mock that, which is a little bit unfortunate and a little bit sad, but it is it is possible for us to like actually do like real request out to Auth0 to like get a test user and, and do that. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, so you memorize the story, you travel a different period of time with the first four digits and later two is my age like i traveled oh okay but wait a second so every year doesn't that make it harder to like memorize because now you have to remember the year that you started memorizing it or you have to re-memorize it but mind palace stuff because you, it sounds like you're describing mind palace and that is fascinating 
to me and i've never been able to get it to work for me very well which is weird because there's some things that i memorize extremely easily and some things that i'm like nope don't memorize this well at all you didn't want to be your small kid you wanted to be a time traveler oh okay nice Okay, so I think that there's a couple things that I potentially want to do. I wonder if I want to be able to like reset the database every time that I run the tests. And I'm kind of wondering if I want to do the entire like on change or on save, it like just reruns, like re resets the database and runs the tests again. That feels like pretty, a little bit too intensive for something like this. We could also just assume that we don't have anything and then just do a bunch of random and like add things in. That might work too. And I kind of like that a little bit more. So I don't care what we have in the database. You never had a good memory. I have uh, to be able to have a reason to have to have a reason for something to remember it. If I have like a strong emotional connection to something, I think I remember it a little bit better. Uh, okay, so let's go and check out what I've got locally here. I kind of want to create a new branch for this. Okay, so remaking tests. Uh, we have, I have like a bunch of playwright stuff in here right now. I kind of want to just reset this. We have this in Git, so I can always go back and, and take a look at it again if I need to like recover and like start over with, or like uh, rebuild like what we had previously. So if I remove test results, oh, test results, playwright, Let's just get rid of all the end to end tests that I have right now. Playwright report. So I think that's everything that I. Oh, no, there's a playwright config. Oh, and then there's, let's remove node modules, the, the package lock, and the package of JSON, because we're starting over completely, and that's the only thing that I need for any of these. Okay. You used to memorize games in basic to impress your friends. That's how you got good at memorizing. Um, there is, oh, what is it? Human Human benchmark game? So the person the person who streams the most that I see like do the best at human benchmark game that's extremely impressive Cutie Cinderella does every once in a while does the human benchmark game where it's just like memorizing numbers in random positions 
around the screen and she can get to like in the high 30s i think generally which is really good 